coming to our uh, third speaker, Murat Zubay. Murat is an artist, a Yemeni artist, who currently lives in France. He is internationally known for his street art and art campaigns, uh, mainly in Yemen, that started during the revolution and then continued um, during the armed conflict. In his artworks, he deals with human rights violations, with the suffering of victims, and he involved in his work uh, communities. So he worked with um, families of disappeared persons, he worked with uh, uh, victims, and um, that's where the link comes uh, to uh, the issue of trauma and how to deal with trauma and with victims and how to use art as a tool. Um, Murtzubai also received international awards for his work, uh, the Art for Peace Award, the Freedom for Expression Award, and the Artistic Protection Fund Award. Murat, please, the floor is yours with the question, um, how uh, do you in your work uh, encounter trauma? Um, how do you think the art helps to deal uh, with, with trauma? Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth for uh, the introduction. And uh, if you allow me, I would like just to, uh, uh, to take a, m a minute of silence for all the victims and all the people who lost their war lives during the, the raging wars around the world. One minute uh, to, remind, to remember those people. So, uh, yes. So thank you so much again and uh, for having me here. It's a pleasure. Um, if uh, just to, uh, to go fast uh, through my work that it's usually I design a campaign uh, with a specific theme, for example, and then uh, later I invite the people to engage in this where after that we can make a kind of debate in the streets and provoking for uh, those issues. Uh, in 2012, after the conflict happens uh, during the revolution, uh, the Sana'a, the city, the capital, was divided into two parts. So um, in that phase, it was the first time to see again, after the civil war, the tanks and uh, uh, the bullets and the uh, RPG in the street. Um, it was a big deal then, and then this is why, after we lost the chance in the revolution, I invited people to the street. So it was this called uh, the Revolution Walls, a campaign that uh, started uh, for three months, where later spread it around the city, our country in Yemen. And here you see, uh, after each event, that there is a collective groups of people they are, uh, whether they are artists, uh, activists, passerbys, and something like this. So uh, we see that people, ordinary people, uh, talented artists, even soldiers, they were engaged after we talked to them. It's the way. So uh, half of any work is how to speak to people. To Congress. So uh, the second and the main important uh, campaign that launched a series of actions, which is uh, the walls remember their faces, which is to remind the enforced disappearance people. This issue was uh, happening since uh, 60s. And I'm speaking today, would like to highlight that this issue, which is enforced disappeared, is still happening in the war still raging in Yemen since eight years. And uh, I'm calling through you for uh, taking a serious uh, procedures to help to, you know, uh, to focus on this issue, which is enforced disappearance in the country. There is hundreds or thousands of people disappeared 
until this moment we are speaking about and tortured. So we have to push all the militias in the north or the militias supported by Iran or uh, coalition to uh, to end this. But uh, this is what's going on. So the uh, the campaign. The campaign, it started, I, I launched it with the enforced disappearance family. This is the power of it. Because those community, it was a small community, but being subjected to oppression and uh, uh, by all regimes followed in the north or after the, uh, of the unification or during the regime in the south, there was thousands of people who were disappeared. And in many cities, we were doing this for uh, 102 and first disappeared, uh, were around 800 face that spread in the, uh, that resulting with awareness to millions of Yemenis about this issue. Of course, there is always a sequence. If there is a power still in power, people still in power, so they will react. So this is what of the ideas, when they prevented, they deface, uh, some of the, uh, or many of the uh, murals. Um, the, the issue that led to the people to search about their and first disappeared, the families. So some of the cases start to appear, like this uh, person is Mutahar al Aryani, who was disappeared in, in the 80s. And uh, when I met him, he was with, many, with others, you know, uh, they were, he was paralyzed, you know. There was, uh, according to the doctors, there was a drill in his legs. And a lot of places in part of his body, there is um, a torture of electricity. If I tell you this is what is still happening in the prisons now in Yemen, until this moment I'm speaking. So the issue is, of course, it was discussed in uh, the parliament. The, gov the United Nations called the, uh, the government to sign on the treaty to protect the people from this. Uh, but unfortunately, there is always something cut this evolution of the people. We were strong that back then during the transition and also uh, the revolution. And then the war invasion of the militias, and then the war followed by uh, coalition. So we are caught. There is always a problem of because of the reunion wars. People fight, but there is something came to cut them from joining the, the future or uh, achieving their dreams. Uh, followed other um, uh, campaigns, which is about uh, treason. Uh, about uh, children recruitment, uh, and then followed, since there is three parts of my work, during the revolution, and then a period of revolution, a period of war, and a period of exile, when I am here since uh, three years. So the ruins you see here, uh, I was targeting with the other Yemenis, they joined me campaigns, uh, the walls that were sh destroyed by, uh, uh, you know, bombardment during uh, air strikes or uh, Katyusha or whatever. And in uh, camps uh, of displacement, uh, displacement people, uh, this is one of the preference because we are speaking here about peace, but there is no peace. And this work called War Brand. So the peace is the uh, brand of war, unfortunately. We speak a lot and uh, um, if, if there is a really a real will to end wars, we can't do it in just a click. Uh, the powerful people, they can't do it, or whatever. So uh, phases of war, the wars, you know, my work start also, as you said, it's a therapy to, to do it with war. I think also in this uh, work, I had a, it was really difficult moment. Uh, then my work start to be more violent, more aggressive, like uh, folk war here. Sorry for this, but this is my conclusion of the war. Uh, it's a person who is being cut by all of his body, and there is only one finger in the middle that's still, but he's still playing with the oud, which is one of the instruments. Uh, this is in London. A woman is holding her baby head 
and uh, one other is in Sana'a, a child who is rising the peace. Uh, exile and refuge wall. Uh, this is a piece called Devoured. A person is eating himself, but also uh, there is other factors from outside that they are helping in this. Uh, it's in the Imperial Museum of Forum, Manchester. Uh, this wall, I did it in three years ago in France, in, uh, in Paris. And this, uh, it was inspired by our, a real people who died in a war and it called the last dance of the dead. So we see the people that they have a strange move when they are dead after the shilling, when we, uh, people get them out. Uh, well, I just, uh, those three paintings, the original one, it was, uh, I, uh, in addition to seven uh, NGOs, we had a meeting in the LEZ with uh, uh, the uh, consult of, uh, the president, Mr. Macron, and it was like a, a protest to put them in in, uh, in context. Anyway, so this is to criticize that there is a, a bargain war. There is no will to end it in Yemen. Arm factories, uh, a lot of um, uh, bargains, a lot of arm uh, sales, and uh, voila, just this to. La Gare de Bonafère. This is in Berlin uh, last year. Ivan War. Uh, I supposed to to bring the original work here, but uh, they said it's it's no it's difficult because of uh, security measurements here. So it was a wall in in Berlin. Uh, the same. This wall you can have it now. It's in the center of Paris. It's about uh, the prisons in Yemen. It's called Prisons of Blood. Uh, it's in Oberkampf wall. It's a famous wall. You can just check it. There is still only one week before they uh, they invite another artist. So it's inspired by uh, Monk, the Scream, uh, famous painting. But also now I added this. It's like invading those barrels or uh, bars that uh, going through the soul, not only just the body. So uh, that's it. So I'm, I'm, uh, I would like to mention the story of uh, children that I did uh, a workshop for them. They lost their families in Yemen. Uh, and uh, it was four days only workshop where I, we give the children uh, pencils and colors and uh, papers. Where they start to deal with it, it was really aggressive in the first day. They tore the, the papers. But then the fourth day, with a lot of par participation with the, uh, or painting, they started to draw smoothly on the, pa uh, on the paper. So this is how art can emerge. I'm not saying that art can find the solutions. It cannot feed people. It cannot stop the killing. But it's a way to say, to highlight for something. Thank you so much and uh, for having me again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Murat. Um, I heard you asking Michel what you're doing. How do you think, what would you need as an artist if you want to address trauma, if you work with communities, what, what do you need? Okay, regarding your question, what I, I do need as an artist, you know, um, you know, it, it, there was since like 11 years, there is a lot of experience really accumulated, but uh, it's not enough, as you said, always, you know, we need to improve. Um, you mentioned that my work is healing and other things, you know, there is uh, many names I forget also, I'm not. So I'm practicing this. Uh, but, you know, uh, the names, it's not really my concentration in this uh, field. But uh, what I need is to move more, to have the accessibility to, uh, uh, for, for, this, uh, for these issues, you know. Uh, and also if I, uh, for, for more uh, efficient actions, maybe to have more training 
regarding this. Um, what we do, it's not really uh, connected just only to art. It's, it's more also to activism, to human rights, to also expression of freedom, freedom of expression. So I, I don't know, there, in these uh, sections, we, we don't find also the, the tools are easy to access to. So uh, this is the situation. Voila. If I, if I answered your question. <laughs> I am Mexican. I lead a, a think tank in Mexico, a Mexico City-based think tank. We, de, we do police analysis. Um, and, and my question is, is there a possibility of healing without justice? Because state institutions are very weak. Where human rights are violated, where we have a crisis of human rights, is because states are very weak and they are not able to solve, to give a response, to construct a truth for the victims. So I'm wondering if, if it's possible to heal with no justice. That's my question. I, I just have one thing. I say that uh, I believe that the justice is the real healing. Uh, so that's it. We need the justice, it's a very important. It's not just uh, half solutions. If there is no justice, then it's a lie. I have, voila, thank you.